This is part two of understanding how compounds behave in solution. We're looking at ionic compounds versus covalent compounds. We recognize that when an ionic compound dissolves in solution, which not all ionic compounds will dissolve in solution, so here we're just reserving our conversation about the soluble ionic compounds, but when a soluble ionic compound dissolves in solution, um, when it dissolves in solution, then we know that that compound is an electrolyte because of the behavior of ionic compounds. When they dissolve, the ions, the individual ions separate, and so you end up with positively charged species and negatively charged species suspended in the water, or I should say dissolved in the water, so they can move freely around and, if necessary, carry a charge. Covalent compounds, of course, some are soluble and others are not, but if a covalent compound will dissolve in water, that particular co covalent compound can act as a non-electrolyte or an electrolyte. In order for the covalent compound to behave as an electrolyte, it must ionize in water and we often think of this as the actual covalent compound reacting with water to form ions and so we use the term ionize um, when a covalent compound acts like a electrolyte in water whereas for an ionic compound when it's acting like an electrolyte in water we use the term dissociate the ions have come apart from each other they've disassociated okay and so um, the types of compounds that are soluble but act as non-electrolytes are those compounds that do not ionize in water and do not react with water such as um, sugar or soluble alcohols will dissolve in water they uh, the sugar molecules will stay intact and you have individual molecules um, solvated, dissolved in the water, but they did not carry a charge. The types of compounds that do dissolve in water, um, that are covalent compounds that we call electrolytes, can further be categorized as a weak electrolyte or a strong electrolyte. Electrolyte. The strength of the electrolyte depends on the degree of ionization of that particular covalent compound in water. Okay, so a weak electrolyte, um, when you place it in water, it will ionize or react with the water less than 5%. So we say less than 5% ionized. And the strong electrolyte is typically 100 or near 100% ionized in water. Okay? And so um, this in this case an example of a weak electrolyte would be either a a weak acid such as an organic acid um, like acetic acid CH3COOH. It only ionizes to a limited degree to form a small amount of ions so it, there's not a lot of ions in solution so if you put the light bulb in there it would only light up to a limited extent um, or weak bases and weak bases for example are ammonia or derivatives of ammonia okay um, and, and then the uh, strong electrolytes that are covalent compounds are the strong acids such as um, you know hydrochloric acid or um, nitric acid for example those acids when placed in water um, completely ionize uh, to form the hydronium ion and the chloride anion in this case or the hydronium ion and the nitrate anion in this case so this will be 100% um, disassociated so if we said HCl we'd have all these hydronium ions in the Cl but if you have the um, weak base for example it would be mostly in the form of the ammonia and occasionally you would have an ammonium ion and a hydroxide anion. So that's the difference between the weak and the strong electrolytes.